to show, I mean, music has been sort of like the, the communication that you've had, the celebration that we've had for years and years and years as human beings. And when we're happy, we play music. When we're sad, we play music. Well, it's a very cathartic experience, you know? I mean, there's that old phrase that says, misery always wants company. And music can be a company to your misery sometimes. It's, mm -hmm. like, it's like if you're feeling something and you hear someone else articulate it, at, at, at a moment, you, you don't feel alone. You feel like, oh, you get me. I know someone else knows what this is like, and they wrote it down perfectly. And when you're trying to think about that, you now have a way of understanding it. And that's the same thing yeah. with love. It's the same thing with loss. It's the same thing with with any real human emotion. I think one of the things that that makes it either solvable or not solvable is your relationship to dealing with that emotion alone. Yeah. It's really right? just the the off the artist's ability to articulate that emotion to the audience and that's the brilliance of it yeah. and that's what i try to do and that's something that some artists can do in ways that you just that again you just stand in awe of i mean my my one of my big songwriting heroes is uh john prine i don't know if you know who he yeah. is i was always amazed by his ability to say so much with so little words just put together in such a wonderful way that you just i almost feel like every line of a john prine song would warrant a tattoo. Mm -hmm. You were gonna tattoo something on your body. Pick any lyric from a John Prine song and it'll do perfectly. Give us an example. I'm not saying that One of my favorite tomorrow, lines, but... this is a song, this is a, this is a chorus, I'll repeat it, I won't sing it. Mm -hmm. But this is, um, this is from a song he did called Bruised Orange. <clears throat> and it's, and the, the song, if you ever listen to it, so if you're listening, listener, go, go look, Bruised Orange, it has nothing to do with uh, Bruised Orange. But it's a song that he wrote, <clears throat> um, and, and the first part of the song is a story about him as a boy going uh, to do a job shoveling some snow at the church, and he hears these sirens, and he real this is a true story, and he realizes one of the altar boys that was supposed to go to church was killed on the railway track. Oh. And he goes and he sees the mothers are all looking around trying to figure out which boy it is. And this has stayed in his memory, and he writes this out as the first verse. It's this feeling of like, innocence being destroyed by just reality and it's this horrible story and then he does this chorus and the and you're not entirely sure what the song is about until you get to the chorus but the chorus is about the whole song is about trying what 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 is the effect of holding on to misery in your life and the name of the song technically is bruised orange but then there's a bracket it's called chain of sorrow mm -hmm. and the lyric goes like this it says um you can gaze out the window getting mad, getting madder, throw your hands in the air, say, what does it matter? But it won't do no good to get angry, so help me, I know. Because a heart stained with anger grows weak and grows bitter, and you'll you find yourself there, becoming your own prisoner, caught up in a trap, wrapped up in your very own chain of sorrow. That's, yeah, that's beautiful. I would, I would want to tattoo that for like, sure. <laughs> it's just, I think it's just one of the most articulate. Like, I feel like that, and it's a song lyric, right? That could be the a writing at the base of a great monument. Yeah, that the world needs to ponder every time it walks past. So stuff like that. But then there's pop songs that you know. My my daughter's uh, uh, like every young girl in the world is a big Taylor Swift fan. I get for some reason I get asked about Taylor Swift all the time if I like Taylor Swift. I'm like. You know, I mean, first of all, I, I whether I like Taylor Swift or not is irrelevant. Like, I think she is will always be the biggest, greatest selling artist of all time in every capacity. Like, I don't think I think there's only one record she may not have broken, mm -hmm. and it may just be the like total number of number ones. But she doesn't speak to me. I mean, she writes. She's a good storyteller. I like her storytelling approach, and I love the effect that she has on the world. I can only imagine how many guitars are being purchased and given as gifts because people want to write songs now because yep. they love Taylor Swift. But, but the one that they do like that I, I've actually been a big fan of, I'm not a huge fan of like her music per se, but I really appreciate her craft of, of pop writing is the Megan uh, Trainer. Mm -hmm. That girl can write a pop song. From what I understand, she produces everything. Most of the she records, and she, I, I, from what I understand, she's quite a wizard on the on the the DAW. That's but she writes these perfect pop songs. Yeah, and. You look at something like that song that she wrote, that um, all about the bass. Now that's a brilliant. It's a brilliant song oh, by yeah, any it's measure. Stuck in my head all day. Well, one, it's an <laughs> incredible hook, right? And it's not. I mean, that's derivative. I mean, a lot of that, a lot of that Motown figured out. A lot of that. And she, I'm not faulting her. Every artist draws from somebody else. 
But what's brilliant about that song in so many ways is that, like, first of all, what's the song about? All about the bass. Well, the song really is about uh, being proud of who you are. Yeah. That's what the song is about. It's about, it's about saying, you may be different. And it's specifically saying that to women who are, who, I mean, not saying that the message doesn't matter, but specifically saying to women, you're not, there's nothing wrong with you. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very deep message and it's wrapped up in a perfect metaphor, a perfect, obvious metaphor that was, that has been sitting in front of people for hundreds of years yeah. and no one has picked up on it and no one has taken that metaphor and used it to explain it. And that for me is like, that's, that's songwriting discovery right there. Picking up something that you might think, like, why hasn't somebody written a song like that? And then as soon as you do, when you play it for somebody, it instantly registers positively. Yeah. And you can play that song for anyone. You can play it for a kid. You can play it for an adult. You can play it for a man. You can play it for a woman. I've seen people instantly react to just the musical hooks to it, the simple architecture to it. And it relates. Like, you can relate to it really yeah. quickly. So that type of song, and then you look at, like, a Bob Dylan song, like... You know, any Bob Dylan song ever written, which mm -hmm. is like, which is, you know, you, you could write a thesis on every single one, you know? So there's a, there's a variety of this and the craft I think is really not really defined because, you know, it, I, you definitely see it affect. So if you listen to a certain type of music, you'll likely create something that was affected by that, but it won't be the same thing. It'll be derivative. It'll yeah. be a certain. And there's no two songs that are the same. You know, technically that's true. I, I mean, we, we have chord structures that could be very similar. We have beats per minute. We have melodies that can be similar. But every song, if it's properly created and if it's not done to yeah. rip anything off, is really an original thing. I've even noticed sometimes when someone is doing a cover that I'm feeling different about the cover than I felt about the original. You know, I have a th interesting thoughts about cover music sometimes because I do feel like at some level, you have to think about a cover that you're going to do and you have to think about why am I doing this? Sometimes you do a cover and you're going to invest a lot of time to perform and perfect one and you're going to do it as a tribute. And sometimes you're going to do it because you want to use that song and its natural ability to gather people to get an audience. And I feel like that you should only, I think musically you should only try to do that for so long until you learn enough about the craft to try to make your own. 100%. Other, other than that, I think you're, you're kind of repurposing somebody else's work for your own benefit without it really adding anything to it. You're just, you're just sticking your brand on something somebody else did. But it's creative, man. At the end of the day, make all the songs you want. It's better than throwing rocks at people. 100%. One of the things that I wanted to uh, to kind of ask you specifically about the music scene in Ottawa, mm -hmm. what are some of the most interesting music shows you've been to? Well, it depends on what you want. So, so first of all, there's some regular musicians that perform in Ottawa. Uh, there's a guy named John Carroll, who's an incredible guitar player, an incredible singer-songwriter. He plays every Wednesday night at The Laugh. There's another guy at The Laugh who plays a regular guy named Lucky Ron, mm -hmm. who is... If you've never been to a Lucky Ron, Ron show, there's another guy who plays at Quinn's, usually Saturdays, uh, another John Allaire, another great. These guys are guitar players, storytellers, that type of thing. The band scene in Ottawa, and I'm going to admit this, indie band scene, the young, the younger person's band scene, I'm not as plugged into. I know a lot of the, the when, those, when the, the kids from that band scene come into the singer-songwriter scene, I know a lot of them. But that's also because I'm in my late forties and I have kids and, mm -hmm. and, and I turn into a pumpkin after 12. <laughs> so I, half the reason I do play the music I do now is because it's, it, it, it gets me home at a certain hour. But I do know that I do know that the venues, so there's a special place in the Glebe called the Redbird. Yep. The gentleman that uh, started that place, uh, Jeff is a musician himself. Um, I had a band and he had a band. We didn't, play together but we know some friends together one degree away is a band was called uh, is called gentlemen of the woods mm -hmm. and i was in a band called cold city kings anyways he started the red bird and it's a really really great place uh they bring in a lot of great music i mean you're not going to see a bad show in fact the whole strip if you go down bank street right now from from the red bird and you head uh north and you go all the way up to like center town 
you're going to hit all kinds of places where there are some really, really heavy musicians that typically play regular. You can hit, obviously, House of Targ. The guys over there are always booking in cool stuff. You can pop over to Quinn's. There's a Sunday night at Quinn's hosted by Tyler Cochran, who was one of my lead performers at Capo, mm-hmm. and he's incredible. I mean, you'll, you'll never forget hearing him play. You walk up the street to Irene's. Irene's does a Sunday night review. I've been there a couple of times. Yeah, actually. really, really. You know, cool. Sunny and the kids over there are doing really good stuff. They do a lot of throwback type of stuff, and they do a lot of, you know, traditional music, which is which is great. You've seen Birdie. Yeah. And then uh, Meow, that's hot. Sort of a singer songwriter place, and they always have really good shows. It's a, it's it's only open four to three days a week. They make hot sauce out of it, and it's a. It's also a beast. I play there month up and down that whole strip, man. It's just nothing but music all the time. And uh, you can discover it. You just just, get there is there. a reason why you're on the show, right? Like yeah, yeah. We want to tell people all about all those great spots. All those great spots. And then the artists that are there. I mean, the, there's artists that are doing residencies and there's people coming into town. Spectrasonic is a great guy behind that. Uh, has been booking bands for a long time. He's always putting on really, really, really... Saw Gallery, Bronson Center. The stuff that's still here is hosting really, really good. And, uh, you know, it's accessible, too. Mm -hmm. It's great to be able to think, hey, I'm going to go see Taylor Swift when she comes to town. But, you know, I've only got a year to mortgage my house to do it, right? So, (laughs) 890 I think, $890 for one of the basic tickets. Yeah, I mean, but that's just economics, man. There's only one Taylor Swift. Right. But if you want to, if you just want to be entertained and and put uh, ten to twenty five by pocket of um, somebody's local, yeah. You know who I will say another another guy locally that I'm a fan of. Really nice guy. He's got some great music. Is uh, he goes by the name Graven? You heard of Graven? No. Yeah. His his real name's Maddie. Really really great guy. Really good songs. He's got a record. He's got a record out. I know he's been. He's had it out for a couple of years, and he's touring a lot. So he's a he's a one man type of operation. Give props to him. He's got some good stuff. Nice. Where sure. does he normally play in the city? You know what? Sometimes he pops in to Ottawa. He's usually out in the valley, or he's playing in Toronto. And he 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 runs the circuit from Ottawa, to Golden Horseshoe process. Mm-hmm. I know he does a lot in uh, Prince Edward County, and he's got um and he's an all in type of guy. I still pay the bills with business development one form or another, but there are I know there's quite a few people that I know double down and just be like I'm going to do this full time. And I hope they do. I mean, I hope they're successful. Yeah. Uh, but I know it's not an easy What are some of the greatest it. bands or artists that you've seen in the city that came up from Ottawa? Oh boy. Well, I would say, well, the probably the most famous one that I did see come up out of Ottawa and do very well was Colorado. I was in a band uh, that one of the winners of the first um, round. Did you ever hear this thing called the Big Money Shot? Yeah. You ever heard of that? Band? So I was in a band uh, called Donkey Punch, and uh, we eventually changed the name of the band. But we won the semifinals and at the Big Money Shot. They gave us a whack load of cash. So we kind of jumped on that little train for a while. And there was a lot of really good bands that came out of it. There was a band called Sojourn, which became Good Luck Assembly. Bruce Lebos, he's in yeah, the real estate yeah, yeah. space. I don't know if you know him. Yeah. Yeah. He is a sick musician, him and his brother. There's uh, Jackie, it used to be Jackie Neville. She married part of an outfit called The Balconies. I don't know if you've ever seen her play. Mm-hmm. She's a, she's a, there's a lot of some, some of the bands that I've seen come out of Ottawa. There was another, there was another band. Uh, well, you know, technically bands like, to some degree, like Montreal Ottawa hybrid, but Half Moon Run is sort of like a half Ottawa yeah. thing. Not so much an Ottawa based band, but an Ottawa connection with members of Arcade Fire. Of course, you got Alanis, who is everybody knows who she is. Of course. You've got a lot of series of great folk artists that have come out of it. I don't know if you know Jim Bryson. Yep. Kathleen Edwards. No. You don't know Kathleen Edwards, no. eh? Oh, well, I'm excited for you because you get to discover Kathleen Edwards. She is a brilliant musician, and uh, she used to run a coffee shop out in Stittsville. I think she oh, well. sold it. I know she did sell it. Jim Bryson, fantastic musician, world class guitar player. You know, like I said, those a lot of the Johns. John Carroll out of uh, is one of my favorites. One of my favorite songs is um, "Everybody Smokes in Hell," <laughs> which is a great. See, that's a very good. It's a very good. You know, you already know it's a good song, yeah. right? Just by the title. Yeah, I mean, there's really too many to mention, but I, I, no, I don't. You don't really see too too many egos too in it. There's a lot of really great people. Mm-hmm. I can tell you from other cities that I've been in. There's well, a one, of the, high one of the reasons yeah. why we don't see a lot of egos in Ottawa, I think, it's because it's it's a humbling city in a way that like you really got to earn it to get there. 
Well, I think it's a short, it's a small enough city that your jerkness will precede you real quick. Yeah. So this city is not a city that, you know. Down mentality for sure. Everybody knows everybody in this city for the most part. Mm -hmm. So if you're, that's not to say, I mean, I know people have ups and downs and that type of thing, but if you're not to be trusted or not to be liked, you will find yourself. Very you will short find yourself. Runway. You will find yourself alone real fast. In very, very short runway yeah, for sure yeah. in Ottawa. A lot of places to hide. Um, I want to go back a little bit on Capo. Just tell yeah, me a little sure. bit more about what's sort of uh, coming up down the line. Yeah. So, so first of all, not to correct you, but do you know what a capo is? You know what that is? No. Okay. So a capo, C A P O, is a device that guitarists use sometimes you'll notice you'll see a guitar and he'll have like this little clip mm -hmm. that'll be on the on the fretboard yeah and what that does is that 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 essentially shortens the string length and it changes the key so so for a guitar player it allows you to to play songs in a different key and so when i was naming the event i actually had a guitar in front of me and i i I looked at the capo and I thought that would be kind of an interesting acronym. So I had to draw, I had to draw the event name out of the name capo. Amazing. And when we talk about capos, when we're talking about it as musicians, if you and I were playing guitar, you said, oh, you've got a capo. Where is it? I would say, oh, it's capo four or capo two or capo five. And that means that's referencing the number of, of frets yep. on your on your guitar. The capo series is like that. So we had capo one, capo two, we just finished capo three. And the acronym technically is the Capital Professionals Open Mic. Mm -hmm. It's a very shifty acronym, more or less, that it's it doesn't exactly match. It speaks to the to the nature of the event. So the next one will be in the fall. We are taking submission for artists and for sponsors as well too. So it's quite a it's quite a great sponsorship opportunity. Sure. We are finalizing things with the next a benefactor so i haven't i haven't or not benefactor beneficiary we don't have that so we, yet. we want to get that just figured out before we announce it mm -hmm. we're excited to put on another show and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and yeah i mean it's any it's ideas about the video or oh we'll do this still? one at the red at the rainbow right now i mean for the, uh, the the rainbow is a wonderful place but the other great thing about the rainbow which is another plug to this place is that it provides a really, really great sound. Live music is great. Yeah. Musicians are good at what they do. But if you do not have a good sound person and a good sound system, it's really not going to do much for anybody. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's something that most people wouldn't think of when they think about why one venue or another. But I've been very happy with them. And I also know the, the team that are behind that. It's a family business. And uh, they're lovely, and that place is a, that place literally has hosted legends, musical legends, the, some of the most important and influential musical people, and not just recently. I mean, they've they've been doing it for years and years and years and years. So fantastic! So yeah. we probably anticipate the announcement in the next month or so, kind of thing. Or I think so. I think so. Keep an eye open. For and for folks that are watching, yeah. I know for a fact that you guys are always accepting. Sort of application for folks that yeah i mean if you want to register go to capomusic.ca register i will contact you at some point my goal is to get everyone who registers some stage time how much stage and when we're going to be doing that is it what we're depends, figuring yeah. out but if you register for capo music uh, i promise you i will get you fantastic that really appreciate it I hey think thanks we for having me have it was to fun. Do a, a secondary show development exactly side. To talk about the, um, the real the real fun stuff. The real fun stuff that you've been doing for the last 25 yep. years. So one thing that I wanted to kind of bring up here is you really kind of set the stage for, for folks out there to know that, look, at the end of the day, there's so much to do in this city, especially on the music side. I did set the stage too. I did that uh, on Friday. Uh, I, I play stage manager. That's literally. Really, literally what my job was. 100%. So yeah. with that being said, I want to end the show on, on a high note here yeah. for everybody. Just let them know that if you, you want to reach out, capelmusic.com. C A C A P O music dot C A. Correct. Yep. Ted Cardi. Thank you so much again. Really appreciate it. And folks, if you like the show, if you like what you see, please comment. Let us know about the, you know, the next business that you want us to interview. And hit the like button, subscribe for more shows like this so we can keep the city going and uh, keep you guys entertained of what's happening within Ottawa and bring more and more businesses around the city to light. Thanks again. Really appreciate it. Have a great day.